the, what I find interesting about stem cells is it's really difficult to, to get what I would say is like pure and accurate information um, in, in yeah. a lot of ways, especially with the internet. So how do, um, how do people, how can people understand the power of stem cells? Like what can they do to help you reage? How does it work within the body and how do you kind of like sort through some of the information or misinformation that's out there? Well, first, uh, it's, it's important to note that the, anything we do here, uh, you know, in the U S uh, is, is based upon good science and some good medical publications or clinical publications somewhere. Most of those publications come from places where stem cells have been quite uh, well received for a couple of decades, like Europe and Asia, uh, and now Central America. And uh, the, the, the Asia's way ahead of us, the publications uh, are way ahead of us. A lot of things we do for joints and spine, for example, come out of the French literature where they have published over 15 year follow-up longitudinal wow. studies. So, so this stuff is well demonstrated, well proven. It's just that we are here in the U.S. are late to the party, and there there are many factors involved in that. Uh, and and one of the one of the reasons, and we'll be clear at the outset here, um, our FDA has not yet approved any of the regenerative medical treatments, stem cell being one of them. There are others for marketing claims. That doesn't mean you can't do them, but. Mm. You know, you, it's very difficult to advertise. It's very difficult to make any, you can't make any claims because they say you cannot make any claims. So we don't want to make any claims here. So anything I tell you would be what we're doing, how we're doing it, what it's based on, what some of the results look like. But I, I can never make a claim to an individual. I'd be non-compliant with the FDA. Wow. Uh, so that's that's important to state. And, and we let all of our patients know that up front. So uh, a good informed decision comes from a discussion with your doctor. But back to your original question, you know, how do you know, you know, you're, you know, where, where, who do you believe? Well, you know, make sure it's founded in good published medical literature. So whether whether it's in somewhere else, another country or, or not. And, and remember, 20 years ago, uh, professional athletes started leaving this country for stem cells. Right. We mm -hmm. have Peyton Manning and you have Tiger Woods and other people that that went to Europe for this. It's it's not new. It just seems new here. Yeah. What are some of the reasons and we don't have to go down this path too far, but like, what are some of the reasons that the FDA would be so slow to make moves to approve this, especially when we've seen them approve stuff very, very quickly when it's, when it, uh, when they want to. So what, what's the holdup, especially if we've got research backing this type of uh, treatment? Yeah. Well, you can, you can follow the money. Uh, and of course, uh, everything I'll say, say here will be hypothetical. Like I don't, I, I don't have the documents to prove it, but, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, um, a lot of big, important companies with a lot of revenue that make pharmaceuticals, that make spine and joint implants will lose a lot of money uh, when they start to pay attention to uh, regenerative medicine being an option for people to either delay or help avoid those interventions. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, now, now, however, big pharma has seen the writing on the wall and they're starting to stick their toe into the regenerative medicine market. And as they do that <laughs> and find a way to monetize it for themselves, uh, it, it'll, it'll flip and, and the FDA will come around. So there are political and economic and governmental pressures that are all driven that way in my, in my estimate. Yeah. And how... So I, I agree with that. I talk frequently on this show with various guests about, um, you know, you follow the money, you find the real yeah. reason behind why things are the way that they are. But, um, you know, to, to swing it back, if someone's thinking about, you know, activating their stem cells or utilizing them, what are some of the things that they should consider? Like, is it possible, for example, to have too damaged of stem cells that it wouldn't help you regenerate. And that's yeah. probably a dumb question, but <laughs> I don't know. That, it's, so. No, it's a great question. You know, listen, our cells become less functional with age and with damage. And, you know, listen, the, the older you get, you can look at 80 year olds and see very healthy, youthful, active 80 year olds and old decrepit 80 year olds and their cellular health it should, should tell you, you know, how they look and how they are based on their cellular health and their stem cells are some of the, are, our cells. So if your cells are affected, your stem cells are affected. And it gets to a point where your stem cells just aren't going to do much. 
Uh, so that's when we tap into a more useful source of stem cells or stem cell derived biologics uh, and, and, and cell messengers that activate stem cells and other cells. And those usually come from donors uh, around the time of a planned C-section. So the, uh -huh. you know, congratulations, mom, here's your baby. Hey, by the way, this amniotic fluid and umbilical cord, you're done using it. Can we have it? And that's kind of, you know, that's where we get it in a fun way. That's kind of what's happening. But th yeah. this is a very appropriate and a licensed and approved process here in this here in the U.S. So. Well, we know why it's not moving at the same speed that it is maybe in other countries, but what are some of the um, what are some of the benefits or maybe use cases is a better thing? What are some of the use yeah. cases for stem cells? And how can they help you in various ailments or just is it a preemptive uh, solution as well? And what, yeah. what can people benefit from? Well, it's a few different buckets of things. The, the low hanging fruit is really musculoskeletal and structural, like joints and spine. You know, we, my, my favorite patients are, you know, having osteoarthritis and bone on bone and told they need a knee replacement or something like that. We want to see those people and help give them an option to slow that process, potentially reverse the process and or avoid that surgery or put it way off. Um, and this comes after, you know, excellent literature, uh, particularly in Europe, uh, on how to address these because degenerating joints is a disease of the cells in the bone edge. It used to be the growth plate where the cells that make cartilage live and those cells make new cartilage during your life and maintain that cartilage, keep it moist, keep it thick. And when they become inflamed and damaged and can't do their job, you wear down the cartilage and you get become what's called bone on bone, right? We tap into the, the, those cells and reinvigorate them by using stem cells or stem cell derived biologics to reverse the inflammation, uh, re-stimulate that factory, put it in new order for cartilage, <laughs> have that yeah. factory produce the cartilage, support that joint. And we have really neat benefits where we've seen MRIs, you know, six months after an injection, uh, showing regrowth of the knee cartilage, for example, and thickening of the cartilage and improvement in pain that goes with that. So, so that's the low hanging fruit, uh, because well, you we have my attention with that one. Cause <laughs> I told you beforehand, like I tore my labrum in my left hip, yeah. um, in just a freak accident, um, running outside. And I slipped on a leaf covering dog poop that was wet and I just popped it. And yeah. Um, that was a couple of years ago now, and now it's like, it's pretty much bone on bone. And, um, that's what actually led me into looking into stem cells to begin with. So I think there's probably a lot of people that could avoid a, an eventual hip replacement, yeah. which is the track my doctors put me on, um, and really sort of take this regenerative approach, which is probably yeah. long-term just better yeah. overall. Uh, well, it Listen, you don't have to have a big surgery with the risks and the downtime and the missed work and all that. Uh, if we can help someone with an injection, that seems so simple, right? And and sometimes I can't believe how easy it is. You know, listen, I used to do brain and spine surgeries and things like that. My job is a lot easier now. Not that I was looking to make it easier, but uh, it's easier to get the results with a lot less pain and suffering uh, for a patient. So I like that. And I'm sure the patients do as well. Thank you for listening to this clip from the full episode of Eyes Wide Open. Please like and subscribe for daily clips and new episodes that drop every Tuesday. I appreciate you.